What's up, fellas? So, this is the head for the uh, that's going on the Capri engine. This is one I took over to Ray's last month and uh, had it checked on his bench. This is what it flowed this column here. Of course, this has got a 1.9 intake valve, and this is another head I'd poured it before. Same, pretty much same dimensions. <clears throat> This one had stock valves in it. And then this one is a 1.9 intake valve and a Milodon exhaust valve. It's an aftermarket valve. It's, it's neck down a little bit at the uh, head. See, these are the stock valves. This is a Ferrero valve. And then this is a Milodon valve. You can see they're both neck down a little bit down there by the head, whereas the stock ones are not. They're just same dimension all the way down so with the uh, I didn't do anything different on the, on the exhaust on this one versus this but it did pick up significantly having the uh, different valve I did a little bit of stuff on the uh, port I'll show you here in a minute but I think if you're gonna you're picking up pretty good CFM just from uh, getting a better valve in there so that's worthwhile is it worthwhile putting 1.9 valves in that's that's the thing uh ideally i would like to put a put the ferrero valve in here and run it on there to see what difference it makes the issue with the uh <clears throat> with the 1.9 valve is i couldn't get the the head i mean i probably could have but i didn't want to chance it on the uh right in here just before the short turn it should be bigger there but i didn't know how much bigger i could go <clears throat> i don't have a uh, a sonic checker that kind of tests it'll tell you how thick the metal is so i didn't know how much more room i had to go wider ideally i think it should be a little wider and then it, it probably would have shown some more towards the top of the chart here but the thing to keep in mind you know if you get a big number here at the top say you got 600 uh, lift cam you know it's going through all these other ones at the bottom twice but it's only hitting that spot one time so it, this part is more important I think so and it did it did pick up a pretty good amount in that in those ranges too so it's going to help it's just a matter of is it worthwhile if you got to have the valves uh, valve job done if you do a valve job uh, you know, it just it's just like another step, I guess. Plus, you got to buy the valves, and if you're going to buy aftermarket valves, you can get a uh, Ferrero 1.9 valves on uh, eBay for like 80 some bucks, or you can get a uh, you know the 1.8 for and keep keep the stock valve size. Don't do any other changes to it, and just run those, and it'll still pick up a pretty good amount, I believe. What? Uh, Let's see, on here, like I said, if I could have made it bigger across here and here, you know, you go shoot for the 90% of your valve size, make sure your throat is that big, and you want to do it this way too, but I just didn't know how much room I would have right here, and I didn't want to get into the water. So I just kind of erred on the side of caution. I didn't want to put a hole in these with as much time and, eff and uh, effort and money as I put into these. Uh, what I've done on these is I, you know, I had the, the boss milled off and then I had him drill it and then I tapped the holes for the screw and rocker studs. And then I used this thing, which is a, a cutter. It's uh, Comp Cams 4733 using that arbor. And I cut that boss off the bottom of the valve guide so I could run a dual spring then I found <coughs> excuse me I found this cutter it's a comp cams 4715 and that cuts a little more off just the top of the boss there so you can run a uh, like an aftermarket head valve stem seal a 0.500 one and that lets you run a LSX style valves a 1.2 or not a valve uh, valve springs so you run a small spring package on these heads without having to, I didn't have to take it to a machine shop for that, I did it myself, but I did have 
the upfront cost of buying these. I think these were like $85 a piece for these two. And then uh, I think this was around 40 bucks. But it's upfront money, but now I can use it as many times as I want. And I ain't gotta <clears throat> pay the machine shop every time. So that is a bonus. If you're just gonna do it one time, it's probably not worth it. But if you're gonna do multiple times, then yeah, it's worth it. So, like I said, having aftermarket valves, I think, is a is a good thing. It and that showed on uh, that me seven heads of Michael's that Michael port or he didn't port them. He didn't do the porting. Uh, I guess at a uh, Wildtech did it, and they probably have a uh, sonic tester there. This is the Explorer head I cut in half because I, I boogered it up a long time ago. This is the one where I cut into the roof before I knew any better. That's how you learn. Make mistakes. Don't be afraid to fail. If you can see in here, it's all dark in there, but let me get this guy over here. You see that hole right there, the bottom hole? That one right there. That is where I screwed up. <clears throat> you can get up, cut up, you can get into the hole up or the roof up here, and uh, that's where the the Thermactor port, that's not a big deal. But ideally, when you're porting one of these Explorer heads, you wanna leave the roof alone, except for like this spot right here. You can move that down a little bit and get it out of your way, and then you can drop the floor. You take a measurement for like from here down to here, between these two points, before you start porting, and then take, you know, like 20 thousandths off the bottom of the floor here, and you know, another 20 thousandths up here, and it'll really make a big difference. Just make a nice smooth curve all the way around. Get it rid of any sharp edges. There's a little ridge right here you can, you'll can you be able to see when you start working on it. Smooth that out. You can make the port a little wider, but don't make it taller. Just get on the floor a little bit right here. Just take a little bit out of that, and you'll be you'll be golden. This is, this would have been green if I had green paint, but I had yellow, so that's what it is. And of course, that's the exhaust port. This is the intake port. And you're doing the same thing. You can narrow the valve guide a little bit and uh, make sure you got a nice smooth curve through here. You really don't need to mess around with the, the back wall. Just like I said, go 90% 90, 90 of your valve width across. And then you can try at least, you know, get up in the up, upper 80s across here. But just make sure you get nice smooth curves all the way <clears throat> and there's one other thing I was going to show you on here this one it's on this one this is your exhaust port you can see on that how you got that area right here and that big thing I think is Guys will want to make the, raise the roof right there a lot, but you can't because you can see here it's not very tall on that side, but this side's real tall, and that's probably where most of your air is going to go. So I wouldn't try to raise that side to make it the same as this side. Just move those two areas like I talked about, the little up on the roof and then on the floor, and then you can widen it a little bit, and you'll... Uh, and just make it nice and smooth all the way out and that'll help it a lot and this and that's just like the E7 heads the uh, Explorer heads the same principle applies you know get your 90% across 85 to 90% across here just be careful not to get too too aggressive with it and make sure you got nice smooth curves and transitions and the air is flowing good the objective being that the uh, the engine doesn't have to work hard to suck the you know the air fuel charge in or have to work hard to push it back out that's more work available to push the car down the track and that's what the exhaust port looks like when it's done and it flowed 200 CFM with a uh, aftermarket valve so that's not really messing with the roof at all that's just a little bit right there in that spot and then the floor and I'm making it wider and then having a nice smooth Transition from the valve seat all the way up into the uh, out the port. 
same thing like I said just make it so the air can travel easy it ain't hitting anything or trying to make any sudden curves because every time you try to make the air change direction like that where it's <clears throat> making sharp turns or hitting hitting ledges and whatnot then it's it's gonna slow down if you want it to go nice and fast so that's pretty much it on these I think I've covered everything with the rest of the shop still looking like we hadn't really done much honestly full disclosure for them usually about the middle part of December till early January we're uh kind of throttle back a little bit <coughs> I'm getting ready for Christmas and other stuff and we just been up to Ohio week before last to get my son's stuff he's going over to uh he left Columbus and went to uh he's over in Pensacola now getting ready for class date for pilot training and one of the guys had mentioned about the, the tools I use for porting I'll make a video about that maybe next weekend but these things uh we got a dyno date I think we're going to be trying for April 30th so that's our new objective make sure to get the Capri going for that and then we'll see how these things work out so anyway that's it for now fellas appreciate y'all later